This video is going to explain the changes that occur in a cell or more commonly a group of cells or a tissue in response to stress stimuli. These changes are called cellular adaptions. Many of these changes are reversible, few of them are irreversible and occasionally these changes can be irreversible as well as harmful in form of tumors. Here. I am showing a normal simple cuboidal cell layer to compare it with changes seen in cellular adaptations. Cellular adaptations are categorized as atrophy, hypertrophy, hyperplasia, dysplasia and metaplasia. All of these adaptations cause abnormal growth. If abnormal growth is due to change in number or size of cells, they can be called atrophy, hypertrophy or hyperplasia. If abnormal growth involves differentiation of cells, it is termed as metaplasia. And lastly, if abnormal growth involves both differentiation and maturation, it is seen as dysplasia, which if progresses further can end up in neoplasia as we will see later. Now, you are seeing atrophied cuboidal cells. Atrophy is a decrease in cell size. Tissue and organs, especially susceptible to atrophy, include skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, secondary sex organs, and the brain. These are hypertrophied cells, which is an increase in cell size. The skeletal muscle, heart muscles, and kidneys have increased susceptibility to hypertrophy. Here, you can view the three adaptations together for comparison with normal cells. Hyperplasia as focused is an increase in the number of cells. It is the result of increased cell mitosis or division. Physiologically, hyperplasia are compensatory and hormonal. Compensatory hyperplasia is common in epithelial cells of epidermis and intestine, liver hepatocytes, bone marrow cells, and fibroblasts. Hormonal hyperplasia occurs in the estrogen-dependent smooth muscle cells of the uterus, which undergo hyperplasia and hypertrophy following pregnancy. Now, you see a tissue lined by a single layer of columnar cells on the left and multi-layered squamous cells on the right. This is an example of metaplasia. Metaplasia occurs when a differentiated cell of one type, called cell in this case, is replaced by another cell type which may be less differentiated, that is, squamous cells in this example. A prominent example of this pattern of metaplasia is seen in the respiratory tract of smokers. The bronchial mucus secreting columnar cells convert to squamous epithelium incapable of secreting mucus. These transformed cells may, may, be, may become dysplasic or cancerous if they are not removed. It is a reversible process though to be caused by stem cell reprogramming. Now, as expected, the next adaptation you will see is dysplasia. In this tissue, you see the normal cuboidal cells on the left adjoining the dysplastic cell on the right. The cells on the right side show variation in the size and shape of the cells as well as their nucleus. The nucleus are larger in size compared to the normal cells on the left. Dysplasia, therefore, refers to abnormal changes in cellular and nuclear shape, size, and or organization. Dysplasia is not considered a true adaptation and is sometimes called atypical hyperplasia. Tissues prone to dysplasia are epithelial cells of the cervix and respiratory airways. Dysplasia may be involved in the development of cancer. Next, in the order of more complex abnormal growth, 
come the term neoplasia or tumor. Neoplasia means new growth, which can begin non-cancerous or malignant cancer. The cells in a neoplastic tissue may show, as compared to dysplasia, greater variations in cell and nuclear morphology. The neoplastic tissue shown here is malignant as it is invading nearby normal tissues and vessels and therefore has the ability to spread throughout the body and metastasize. The lesions, chiefly metaplasia, dysplasia and neoplasia, form a spectrum with metaplasia at one end and malignant at the other end. The lesions near the metaplastic end of the spectrum have more chances of reversibility and less chances to progress to dysplasia or malignancy, while those near the malignant end of the spectrum have less chances of reversibility and more chances to progress to dangerous lesions.